Flex are off. Our rhino is indeed up. I'm trying to get identification. I haven't really done any work on the ears yet. But I will remember this one's ears moving forward. skin okay yeah it is this is our beautiful female that had got an injury a while ago she's still looking good it's the only one I've really seen lately I thought it was maybe another one but there we go here the feeding starts happening now you can see that that layer of grass in front of her just gets munched. I'm going to be quiet and allow, allow you to listen to the noises. Yummy. So with the mouth that wide, it's impossible to select. So they just feed on the bulk. And that's okay, a big animal like this can afford to feed on bulk, they just need more of it. We talk all the time about our ruminants. And a rhino falls under the category of a non-ruminant or a hindgut fermenter. So she puts the grass in her mouth, she gives it a little bit of a chew, it goes into a pretty basic stomach. And then out of that basic stomach it goes into a big chamber off of the intestine called the cecum. Where a whole lot of gas and ferment or a whole lot of fermentation takes place. And that is actually the place where the hindgut fermenters, as the name implies. That's where they get most of their benefit from the vegetation. That dung or manure is then expelled out of the rhino's bottom, very, very poorly digested, but with enormous amounts of bacteria and microorganisms. <laughs> Solomon, you reckon the oxpeckers feel really safe? <laughs> I suppose you you can say that. They're not going to get trampled, possibly. But uh, I think they're feeding mainly on flies that are attracted to her body at the moment. And lots of little insects following her around. Might be some ticks. The red billed ox picker. I wonder how long it takes them to get used to these birds just using them as a, as a place to hang out. I'll poke them and prod them wherever they see fit. Right there in the eye.
Bear in mind, well, they're a big animal and they are able to charge. They are able to defend themselves. Um, a rhino that does feel threatened, though, generally lifts its head up, its tail turns up into a sort of a pig-like tail, and they trot away. They can often come back again at high speed. Their eyesight is not, or not known to be incredibly good. Their hearing and smell is very good. So sometimes they can actually be quite inquisitive and come closer to investigate what it is that startled them. But they are a relatively easy animal to startle. It doesn't mean they're going to stay away. You know, because you know their hearing is so good and their eyesight's not great, they're not certain what it is. So if you happen to be walking and the rhino came towards you and you made a loud noise, they would move off. But if it's a dominant territorial male, he could come back. So generally, if you have startled rhino on foot, they do move off. It's a good idea to, to reposition yourself somewhere a little bit more safe. Oh, that's a lovely profile there. She's just giving us a full 360. So she has lost a fair bit of condition. You can see that in the skin on her ribs there. For those of you who don't know, she was caught in a fire the year before last, I believe, but she's still doing all right. I haven't seen her with a calf. I don't know if, if maybe she's been injured too badly. But as you all know, everybody, there is a huge war going on in Africa at the expense of this animal, and so I'd just like to spare a thought and a prayer right now for all of those out there doing the hard work to combat this this battle combat this war it's a very very tough place we find ourselves in and also just send out some love and compassion to to the species that um, some of our children or grandchildren might not ever see so let's hope that isn't the case had a wonderful chat the other day with Joe Peterson. He's doing lots and lots of work with the Rhino. And I think the education and the awareness behind it globally is paramount in curbing the disastrous things that are happening at the moment.